Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another live stream covering World Creator 2022. Hope you guys are doing great this evening. Um, today, we're going to basically be doing something pretty similar to last week, except we're going to just go through the process of creating a whole new terrain from scratch, bringing it into Blender, doing a few different things from what we did last time. Perhaps we're going to do a little bit more in the texture realm. Um, I'm hoping that we have some time to kind of implement uh, a few Megascans textures, particularly the RD textures, since they kind of already uh, sort of worked work with World Creator and kind of come with World Creator a little bit. But um, first order of business, I'm testing on a different mic right now, trying to get the one that I've been using for live streams to basically be out in, of my face. This one's kind of off to the side a little bit. So if you can't hear me well, just let me know and we will adjust accordingly. So again, recap, we're going to just start a brand new terrain, create something from scratch, and then we'll go through the process of bringing that into Blender like we did last time with splat maps, textures, the works. Um, I haven't tested out exactly which terrain I want yet, but we'll just uh, have fun and kind of go through whatever feels right. So I'm going to ensure that the precision is at a quarter meter because I want to kind of export this at 4K. Uh, we could probably do 8K, but I think 4K is sort of the best realm that we could pro probably do for Blender right now in this example. And um, uh, I don't really want this landscape, so let's change the seat a few times. Let's try and find something uh, kind of in our realm. Now I'm just going to keep going through. Let's see about this. Now let's try this time to kind of go through and make a base shape that's not based on this classic. We haven't touched this yet, and I'm hoping, and actually, oh yeah, for keep forgetting that I could do this instead of doing this each time. That's uh, my mistake. So yeah, we're gonna go around. I think this shape should give us some decent results. We'll see. Um, so we haven't done this under base shape. We haven't done this style yet before where we could choose between different variations of sort of base structures to work with. Um, we're going to do a stream specifically on covering these or each individual piece and kind of what involves with the different settings for each kind of style. Um, I'm kind of hoping to wait till the next version of World Creator comes out because I think, I think, don't quote me, but I think that this style is going to change or get updated a little bit, especially in the biome realm. Um, how this works, how biomes work, you being able to paint different layers is going to change just a little bit. Um, so we're just going to test one right now that's maybe sort of mountainous and see uh, what kind of works. So let's try a mountain one. And let's see what sort of settings we have here. Style, scale. Let's see what roughness does. I haven't messed with these too much. How about, let's see what mountain range does for us. Style scale. Oh, that's too much. Valley range. Oh, here we go. Valley height. Let's um, real quick get our GPU information in here so that we can kind of see the min and max height. That's not entirely important, but um, it could be for some other applications like Unreal Engine. Let's see. We got a forest range. That's interesting. Let's see, forest height. Okay, so I don't think mountain steepness, mountain height. I think I'm going to stick with a single mountain here. 
yeah, we're going to stick with a single mountain and let's see, let's change our roughness just a smidge. Actually, eh, we could do it pretty high because we're going to add a couple more filters. Let's see if we can, um, Ooh, that's really, uh, intense. We're going to do ridged, but let's make the top part a little bit rough. So I'm going to distribute this. Let's turn on our heat maps. Add distribution and height. Let's change that height to be a little higher. And maybe feather that down just a smidge. Something like that, so that our ridge is really just highlighting the top parts of the mountain. And then we can add more, uh, let's see, how about we do, let's see, rocky wide, rocky hard. I'm not gonna get too crazy here. Let's see. Mm, rocky erosion, I, I'm just kind of fiddling here. We're not actually getting into anything too important. All right, let's do that. And then let's change the general strength something pretty low. We'll do ridged up at the top, make it a little rocky. All right, and last but not least, we will add a mud sedimentation. And we will stick its distribution to the bottom area. Wow, we're really changing. Hold on, 260, that is pretty high. Let's lower. I'm gonna lower this top value a little bit. There we go. And let's see, for mud, where are we? Height. Jeez. There's a little bit of, uh... yeah, there we go. It's a little bit of weird scaling issues there. There we go. Something just a little bit smooth here in the bottom range here. All right, so this doesn't look terrible. So we're gonna take this and we could spend a whole lot more time on it. But I think this sort of, let's get out here. This is sort of a good little valley. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. And also again, let me know if the audio is weird or not. So I think these ridge lines should do fine. Maybe, where is this ridged at? All right, so our ridged filter kind of got lost. No thanks. There we go, we're bringing it back a little bit. Right there. That way we can get our, our peak ridges to kind of pop up at the top there. All right, I'm going to save this real quick so we don't lose all of our information. Blender, we'll just put this in a new folder called 
test number three. Maybe if I can type, we'll just call this a mountain region. Okay, so let's quickly texture this. Now, I mentioned that we're going to texture a few things, um, hopefully with some actual textures. If you were going to create or export this from World Creator to something like Blender or Unreal Engine, and your whole purpose is to use this terrain as a vista, or also called a, a background terrain, where it doesn't have that much substantial amount of detail that's really needed to be seen, um, it's really meant for a background element, then I would go ahead and you really, depending on how far the terrain is, you wouldn't really have to add real textures to the terrain, you could just basically work plenty fine with uh, colorizing or creating materials based on just colors in uh, World Creator and then exporting a single texture for the entire map to be used as a background terrain. We did this last week in Blender where I exported a single color map for the whole terrain, a really low poly terrain. We imported that into Blender and used that as an example. That was one of the two examples. So. If you also wanted to have a little bit of co uh, color variation, then you can add textures and you can do that here. You've, you basically have to choose under the texturing category here, the texture type. So it's either you're going to import your own textures or you're going to import a substance material. By importing or choosing textures, you can select uh, one of these um, five maps here. And if you choose which map it is, it should automatically import the rest of those once you go and find one or you can just manually import these um, however you want and so it's going to display that texture here just like you would with colors um, but that's not necessary if you're going to just be using world creator to create splat maps or masks in order to then take a texture in blender or unreal engine then you don't really need to worry about the resources of texturing or using real textures from Megascans or wherever it is in World Creator because it's just going to make your system a little slower. I would just stick with um, just colors for the shading here, and then we'll go through the process of creating splat maps for using those textures in the other application, which is what we're going to do here. Um, we're going to do it pretty simple. Uh, we're going to keep, let's see, I think we could... Do, let's just change this to sort of a green color. It doesn't really matter what it is because we're going to try to implement some actual colors within Blender. So we're going to use green here. Uh, we're going to double right click and duplicate this. And then maybe we change this green to a little bit more of a, a little bit of a light or a little weird off color green here. Let's distribute this based on flow. And if I could see this correctly, all right, range strength. Let's see what happens. Uh, we don't want it to evaporate, or do we? Let's see what um, having many, many small. Oh. Let's turn the evaporation down just a smidge and increase our iterations or increase our rain strength, and which increases the amount of rain. The value increases the overall strength of this, so it makes it much, much darker. But I think this might be a little too big. Let's take the value down to somewhere around 70% and make sure that the evaporation is a little bit lower so we can kind of fill up this area down here. There we go. How about the range strength being just a smidge lower? All right, we're just kind of fiddling now. All right, so now I'm going to then do cavity, concave, and then we could, let's see what this does. Increase our step size. 
Mm, a little bit. That's not bad. Let's blur that edge some so that we can get a nice feathered effect. Maybe we should blur it a little more. See how I'm just taking that harsh edge and kind of feathering it out some? There we go. Not too bad. So this is probably a bit much. Actually, it's not too bad. See how we're just kind of colorizing a little bit here. All right, so we got two colors there. Let's add another one. Let's add a rock color here somewhere around the gray region. Let's try using the rocks distribution. And let's see, the step size of our rocks are a little smaller. Maybe just a smidge smaller. Yeah, see how small these are. Let's try playing with our threshold sum. We're also going to make it convex. And we're going to feather this out as well with wherever it's at. Blur. I can't quite uh, make sense of where that's at. Let's blur that out pretty far. There we go. All right, now let's see the threshold change again. So we got big rocks and we got, if I can showcase it, we got a little sort of a rocky edge here, but that's not quite looking a hundred percent. We'll duplicate this same color and everything. That one's not looking too bad. We'll change the step size a little bit bigger. We can make it just a smidge. Well, let's make it a smidge darker. And then let's make the... Let's do it based on height. Gonna go down to about 330 since our terrain max height, weirdly enough, is 320. Uh, let's lower it just a smidge more. There we go. We can feather this down. All right, let's see what this looks like. white what I want to be honest let's instead let's try curvature okay now we're getting somewhere Let's see, radius. Okay, that's looking, a, I guess, a little closer, but that's okay. We're gonna Yeah, we'll stick with that. And for now, let's add one more material. And we will do height. This one, we're just going to basically add a little bit of snow. It's nothing special whatsoever.
if you wanted to see a little bit more of the snow tutorial, we've got a whole, or I have a whole video specifically on snow. That's way too much. Specifically on designing for snow and different variations of snow. So that would be probably the best um, area that I would say on checking out snow because it's just so vast and we, we basically go into huge depths on how to texture for snow. All right, let's check the vertical angle range here. All right, so we got this. Maybe the smoothness is out just a little bit. All right, we're gonna do another one of these. We're gonna select add this time and change the horizontal angle to be on the other side. And maybe this blend is a little bit higher. So that way we can have multiple variations of the same distribution or the multiple distribution types for the same color. Okay, and one more distribution type we will do as, let's see, cavity. We will add it to this particular stack here, but we'll do convex. Let's see, step size. Hmm. Actually. There we go. We want that to be completely added. So step size. There we go. That's not quite what I wanted. All right, let's remove this. <laughs> Sorry, we're going back and forth because we're not quite getting exactly what we want here. So let's add one more height. All right, so this is where I wanted. I wanted this to be to add. And we will add it at about, let's see, the top is 326. So let's add it to 316. So it's right here. If I were to remove that, you see that's right there. So. Let's lower this just a smidge. Maybe that was a little too much. And we will add a simple flow to feather out that, that bottom piece. And there we go. We have a little bit more of some snow distribution, but this height here, that is Actually, with this particular height, we will not make it that smooth. Yeah, and we will then, because now we're getting into some weirdness, let's do a simple flow for its edge. Perfect. And then we'll also add the noise offset to kind of add a little noise here. We're getting too far into... <laughs> trying to detail too much. So we're going to keep it like this. And we're going to work with just this many textures. So we got 30 minutes to see what we can do with adding as many textures to our terrain in Blender as possible. 
So if you remember, we basically broke down on how to understand the texture exporting or the splat map exporting in the last video. I don't think I'm going to try and cover that too much, but at, at its essence, splat map, choose splat map. Each one of the preview layers here is resulting in one of these material layers here and how it's being distributed on the terrain. And to know that the type here layered will show you everywhere that that particular texture or filter is being distrib distributed based on its distribution rules. So whatever these rules here on how it's distributed, if I select this uh, heat map here for this green, ooh, there. So this green one here should be this one right here. So preview layer number one, which is the second texture. This is the second texture in the stack. So if it were uh, blended, then it will cut away all the other materials that are basically masking on top of this material and the resulting uh, splat map will be sort of a merged um, effect from the other textures, but we don't want that. We want to just make sure that it stays layered so that we can then choose within Blender or Unreal Engine how much of this particular uh, splat map is being added to or subtracted to. So. We're just going to keep it at layered. Uh, PNG is fine. We can do 16-bit, which is also fine. Um, let's see. There was one. Oh, yeah, and single channel. Be sure if you want to do a grayscale export, choose single channel. Otherwise, it will export as an RGB image. And I'm going to turn this down just a second. All right, so. Let's select the folder that we're going to export to. I'm going to then navigate to that same folder that we set up. Once I find it, World Creator Live, here we go. So World Creator Live, that was it here? Yeah, test three. So we'll select this folder. When we hit export selected, it's going to basically export a map of each one of our uh, distributions here, including the bottom one, which we really don't need, but it's still going to do that. So we should have one, two, three, four uh, distributions that we really care about, which is one, two, three, and four. So export selected. It should have gone through that process already. And here we go. We got splat map number one, two, three, and four. So then let's go ahead and add our height map. And we're going to choose EXR, float 32 is fine, uh, single channel, and we don't have to worry about using the alpha channel, so this one should be fine. If you are using this for, this is a little weird, but if you're going to be exporting for Unreal Engine, I would use raw and then also 16 bit. Let's do, let's do this real quick. So raw, little Indian, um, yeah, little Indian 16 bit raw. And then here is where you're gonna pay attention to. So the game engine scaling. So right now, uh, Unreal Engine will scale things based on 512 meters. So it's minus 256 and positive 256 in the grayscale range. Well, right now we have a range, which is really weird. So it's 326 meters minus 300, uh, 234 meters. So that range, you would just divide that out of uh, 512. And the game engine scale here should be right. So you would scale this down to 17.97. So that would give you uh, a similar scale. This, I'm not sure why that uh, scale happened that way, but that's essentially what would happen. All right, so EXR, float 32, single channel. Everything looks fine. Let's see here. Right orientation, so export selected. All right, so we've exported that. Um, we could, actually, we could export the normal map if we want. It's, I don't think we're gonna use the normal map in this case, but we'll just export it just in case. This one takes just typically a little bit longer to do. 
that or it'll just completely freeze your computer. There we go. It didn't freeze. Thank goodness. All right. So let's turn this off. All right. This isn't the best texture, but it's just for reference to kind of show you the process that we uh, showcased last week a little bit. So we're going to save this again and we shouldn't have to come back to a world creator for a little while. All right, so we're in Blender now. So one thing that we want to always, and if you use Blender, you really need to make sure you have this open. Go to add-ons, type in node, and make sure you have Node Wrangler on. It's pretty important. We're gonna delete that, because that's what you do. All right, so now let's get our terrain in here. We're gonna shift A. We can do a mesh or we can do a grid. Let's say down here we want this size, if I can remember how I did this, that size and that we had is 1024 by 1024. So here's the size of our terrain. And if we go to edit mode, which I shoot, I just, I did that by accident. So it's been subdivided 10 times, but you can also subdivide it again a few more times if you want. Let's see, five, so now it's 50 times. All right, so get out of edit mode. So now we need to, oh, and if we, uh, oop, I just did the wrong thing. Let's see. All right, don't worry about that. So in, we want to make sure that our clipping plane, we can see pretty far, and I went ahead and just did that. But now we want to basically add our height map to this terrain. We're gonna do that by displacing it. So we have, I think 50 by 50 subdivisions here. So that's enough to get us started, but it's obviously not gonna be all, as much as we need. So we're going to go to the modifier panel, add modifier, displace, and we're going to add a new displace here. We don't have a texture loaded, so we're going to click this icon and which will then take us to the texture panel. But before we do, let's set the coordinates here. Actually, we'll skip that here for a second. So let's go ahead and click uh, this, which will take us to the texture panel. Make sure it's on image and movie. We can click open to go to our location and I will navigate. All right, I will navigate to the height map EXR here, open this image, and you're probably wondering, well, what the heck just happened here? So when you do this, well, first, let's take the linear here to non-color data for color space. And in here, back in the uh, modifier tab, the coordinates here, instead of chain, instead of the using the default of local, we want to make sure it's UV, which is based on the object of the uh, the item. So if I change the strength, you can see it should look close to uh, what we have. So that strength is obviously quite a bit. And we'll just we'll just roll with that. So we know that. Let's see here. Let's take our strength to something like two. So we know that there's supposed to be some uh, deformation here. How about we take the mid-level to zero and let's take the strength to 100. So that does what we want. But this is looking a bit blocky. So we need to add more sort of subdivisions to this. So let's add a new modifier. And it's going to be subdivision surface. We want to do the, the subdivision before we do the displacement because otherwise the subdivision is just going to smooth out um, what is being displaced. So let's drag this to be before the displacement. And let's see, let's add a few of these. We can do the render panel to be six. Actually, before I go anywhere, let's change our thing to cycles and GPU compute. And air experimental is fine. All right, so here we basically have the terrain and you can see it's just a little bit 
squared off, but the more subdivisions you have, the more it's going to use that height map to subdivide the terrain. So the more that you subdivide the terrain, obviously the more detail is going to be added, but you gotta keep in mind that the more detail or the more times that you do this uh, subdivision, it's the more hits that you have on the computer. Um, so you have to bear in mind with that. Sometimes having a subdivision a little less while you work, like something like three while you work, and then six when you go to render is a, a good bet. So I'm gonna keep mine somewhere around four and let's shade smooth so that we can kind of get rid of some of that blockiness. So now we have the general look of the terrain, but if we went to render it, it's gonna render at a much higher uh, subdivision. So we could, we talked about this on the last stream where we added a normal map to, or a high resolution normal map to the terrain to add that detail in, which you can do. You can have a low level subdivision and add that detail in with a normal map but we're not gonna do that in this case because we're going to just basically use the height map to generate uh, that pretty high level detail. And when we texture this, uh, we're gonna let the textures sort of drive some of that. So let's go ahead and kind of showcase some of the texturing a little bit. I know we're kind of running through this fairly quickly, but I wanted to showcase a couple things with splat maps again. So we have the terrain selected, select new, and we have a new uh, principled BSDF shader for our terrain. In order to see that, go to the viewport shading, and then we can change the base color to be whatever we want. Or we can go to the render tab, and we can see whatever we want, but let's take this light yeah, see that little light right there? <laughs> it's a tiny little thing. So let's change this light real quick to the sun. And maybe it's strength at 100 or 1. There we go. 2. Yeah, there we go. So let's see. There we go. So now we have sort of a rough little shade of what we've got here, but we're not gonna do that. We're going to try and see uh, the terrain in its element here. So with Node Wrangler on, let's, well, actually let's go ahead and set up a couple things let's see what our we're going to do the snow we got snow we got two different kinds of rocks and two different kinds of grass let's set up the uh, base grass color first and we're just going to start out with setting up colors so shift a and we can do and i always forget this where are you should be haha <laughs> I always forget where the heck. And you can do this. New nope. RGB. Yeah, I always forget where that's at. And I was probably pretty dumb for forgetting that. All right, so we are going to use one principled BSTF per, um, per color, basically. So. Let's just say this one's green, a little bit of a darker green, and it's the base color. Make it a little bit darker, and it's pretty rough. We'll adjust this later. Okay, so now I'm going to select this, and I'm going to hit Control or Shift D, put this down, and what was our other color? something like that. All right, so now we're going to shift, uh, shift A, add a shader, but this time we're gonna add a mix shader. Mix shader, add this one to the bottom, 
And now with our two different colors here, we could shift between the two different colors, but we're going to let our splat map number one do the driving for this. So we're going to drag and drop this in. The uh, grayscale map is not color space of sRGB. It should just be non-color data. So we're going to take the color output, plug it into the factor. And in a few short, long seconds, you can see now that we have the color of that uh, this color here. If I were to brighten it up and darken it, it kind of looks cool, dark darkened a little bit something like that. You can see now that this uh, splat map is now masking essentially the uh, secondary color. So let's now, because this is going to be pretty confusing with me adding more of these, I'm going to select these two here. And if I hit shift G, I think we can select a group or we can right click and group these. So now we've grouped this particular color. I tab out. So the first color is in a group. Oh, it's control G. All right, tab out. And the second color is in a group. So instead of having all of these sort of, these graphs be completely sort of crazy with um, the node groups or with the, um, the node graph here, we can just say, okay, this color, and if you press in, you get this uh, little box that comes out here. We can name this node group. So we're going to enable this uh, node group as base grass, base grass. So this one could just be sort of, um, I don't know, grass fluid because it's got the fluid sim to it. All right, so then we can just shift D this and we'll call this one rock one, shift D this one. We'll call this one rock two, shift D the next one, and we'll call this one snow. So we're going to go to rock one, hit tab to enter, and we'll make sure it's white. Ah. Apparently you can't copy groups. All right, we will just do it from scratch. That's all right. So we will add a shader principal BSDF, add an RGB node, and this will be rock number one. And this will be rock number two, which is a little lighter, I think. All right. We'll call this one. This one now will be rock underscore one. This one will be rock underscore two. Hey, Yimmy, how are you doing? We are doing some fun stuff. I'm kind of just going ballistic here. <laughs> All right. And then we will add one more shader. RGB. And this one will be snow. So we will group these two. I'll put this one for snow and we will just call this snow. All right, so we have our three or four uh, or five texture groups here. 
Now let's then distribute each one. So we're gonna go through this one, gonna go through this one. And now for the final output, to the surface here. So it's gonna look a little weird until I finish out every bit of the uh, texture sets here. Okay, so now let's add our splat maps of each individual piece. So splat map number two, right there. This one is going to control this guy. I believe. Yeah. Splat map number three. It's going to control, if I can grab the node, this guy. Well, that didn't go too well. Yeah, we'll just, uh, for sake, we will keep, ooh. There we go. For understanding sake, I'll just put these splat maps on top of the shaders that they are controlling. So we'll just know that they're controlling each one of these. And the last splat map here, number four, we will have this one control this mix shader. Oh, I've done a tutorial on Blender and used it for making face mods in my soccer game. I used, um, I was amazed something like that was free. Oh yeah, Blender is awesome. The fact that it's completely free. So you transferred this from World Creator. Yes, I did. Hey, Traveling Pie, thanks for joining again. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, having a good night, having a fun night. Um, doing a little bit of what I did last week, but I am merging uh, sort of our uh, individual shaders here. So each one of, basically, I went from this in World Creator it's not the best texturing job. I wasn't trying to <laughs> be perfect at texturing, but um, just showcasing the different uh, materials that we have, and we're exporting these to Blender, um, and we're distributing these materials based on these splat maps. And these splat maps, which, ooh, I should have remembered to change these from sRGB to non-color data, because that's what they are. And so these splat maps are controlling these mix shaders, each one of these groups here, if I can uh, tab into it, we'll be setting up a sort of graph setup for each one of these um, textures. So we've got the base grass, the grass fluid, which is this little sort of brownish grass. We got rock one, rock two, and then we have oop, this one, this group, should be called snow. So if I tap into this, we have a completely different shader for snow that we can work. And we're just having sort of this master material here that is uh, controlling all the mixes. I am a bit late. <laughs> That's no problem at all. But here nonetheless. Oh, yes. And remember, if you ever I uh, wanted to rewatch some of this jargon. Um, I always have it open for Patreon users by the end of the week. And if you wanted to hang out a little bit longer, I open it to YouTube a week after that. And it's the 4K version. So, yeah, it's the best version. All right. So seemingly now we have our distributions of each of the types of textures. 
It's a, uh, oops. It's not perfect right now if I can uh, use my mouse. But you get the idea. And the whole thing that I was trying to showcase today really is that we could, again, let's go into, let's choose rock, for example, the first rock. We're going to go in here and let's go into bridge. So I'm going to be using RD textures. If you want to know how to find RD textures as part of the Megascans library, click the search bar, just type RDT and enter. And all of the RD textures that you could also purchase um, from the World Creator portal would be these as well. Now, albeit everything from the Megascans library is only free with the use of um, Unreal Engine. And within our um, World Creator license, I think you get 16 or 24 of textures, RD textures for free. Um, but if you purchase the textures through your user portal with World Creator, you could use these textures wherever you want. Um, it's kind of an, an odd licensing thing because I know you can get them for free here and Bridge is supposed to be used uh, for free exclusively with uh, Unreal Engine. And if you buy credits, you can use the textures anywhere you want. But since you can, are, since the RD textures are already licensed for uh, World Creator, that's what we're just going to grab from here because I have um, all of the textures here. So here's all of the uh, RD textures available, all 116 or so of them. Um, but I don't have a good filing system to kind of see all what each one is. I am just using Bridge to be able to see what's what, and then I will grab it. So uh, let's see, Jagged Rock looks okay. We can just, uh, let's go ahead and just download this and I'll show you a pretty cool import method. Once it decides to download, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to, if I delete this rock here, because X is delete, uh, we'll talk about this group import here in just a minute. Let's see, it's downloaded. All right, so this jagged rock is downloaded. I'm gonna right click, go to files. And here we are. Okay, so instead of dragging and dropping all of these files in here, I'm gonna select the principal BSDF shader and now I done forgot what the, uh, command is <laughs> wow I never forgot what the command was oh it's uh, command. wow I'm so I am stunned I can't remember what the dang command is Yeah, it's not that. Well, I feel really bad because I can't remember what the command is. So if you select the principal, oh, how many times did I do this? If you select the principal BSDF and you hit a certain command, and I can't remember what the stupid command is, uh, you can basically open in, uh, it will populate everything with that texture automatically. What is the command? Hold on one sec. Don't worry about answering it. It isn't on the theme with your lesson, but what is the best use case of Blender versus uh, World Creator? Well, World Creator got us the, I didn't create this terrain in Blender. That's just, World Creator is what designs the landscape. And we exported this landscape with various splat maps and height maps and stuff. So um, Blender, you can certainly create a terrain with, um, inside Blender using geometry nodes and all sorts of nodes, but it's much easier just using World Creator uh, for creating the landscape and using Blender. If Blender is your pipeline for rendering things, then um, it will sh basically help you um, create the terrain easier in World Creator, import that into Blender. If you're using Blender for uh, rendering or 
VFX work. Same thing as if you're using it for um, taking it to uh, Unreal Engine. All right, let's see, creating groups. I one second. I'll be right back in ten seconds. Okay, I'm back. I just had to, uh, I couldn't mentally go on without remembering what this command was. So select the principal BSDF shader and do control shift T. There we go. So control shift T, find, wow, where was this at? All right, so we're going to go to libraries. Megascans library, downloaded, surfaces. Now, what is this called? Surface rock. <laughs> so we're going to go to, once I scroll down with all of my completely huge list here, surface rock, that's it, here we go. So if we were to then select the albedo, let's see, rough, Roughness, normal, and I don't know if I want displacement. Let's just do, I'll, let's see, is there ambient? Yeah, let's just do for understanding purposes. We'll just do albedo, normal, and roughness. So principled texture setup. It should import those and create the node structure for you automatically. This is really cool because, look, it's already set up the uh, mapping for you, the textures, the uh, normal map here connecting, and everything just works. And if we zoom in, we should be able to see a little bit of that. Uh, that texture is kind of overshadowed with, uh, here we go. You can see a little bit of that, that texture right there. <laughs> And some of it is peeking through here. So some of our texture is kind of hiding. So we're going to get out of this, go to rocks number two, do the same thing. So remember, so control shift T. I'm going to select all those same ones. There we go. So now you can see that uh, rock texture is being applied directly to the landscape in this sort of feathered area. This, the snow is kind of kind of bothering it too. Check out the, ooh, let's see, nice. What were you using it Oh, I see you are talking to each other. <laughs> the show Next Gen on Netflix was done in Blender. I'll have to check it out, did not know that. Uh, speaking of which, how do does my mic sound? Because I am, since you guys are here and active now, there is, I wanted to see how everything sounded because I'm using a different mic that's kind of not in my face like my last one. And so it's a shotgun mic that's kind of a foot away from me. So I'm just making sure it sounds good. All right, that's perfect. All right, so let's do another one. Let's do the... We'll skip the grass for now, let's do the snow. Let's go to the snow, exit this one, and let's also search snow with RD textures. So trampled snow, trampled snow. Well, we don't have fresh snow. Let's use fresh snow. We're gonna import and download, we're gonna download and import this. And um, I think we will, 
kind of running out of time. I wanted to showcase a little bit of a neat trick with merging some of these. Let me see if I can't do that with grass real quick to kind of exemplify what I'm going to be after. All right, so we will go to files, wherever my... All right, so snow and a bunch of jargon. So control shift T. All right, so now we're gonna look for snow and some jargon. Whoops, went too far. Snow mixed, that's it. So we're gonna do albedo. Let's do normal and roughness. Let's see how specular adds in there as well. There we go. Specular got added. What is this guy? Oh, that's the group. All right, so this is pretty cool. All right, so we got snow. The snow is a little big. So, oh, these textures are huge. So let's take our scale factor. I forgot how to do that, that particular thing. So now we scaled things up on 100. Let's go to rocks. We're going to spend some time next week, probably just in Blender on this. Yeah, there we go. So you now you see the rocks are kind of coming in a little bit better. And the snow is coming in a little bit better. It's still a bit too big. Yeah, so that snow has done some damage. You see how, how tiled it is? But if we were to take this, Shift-D and duplicate this, let's take our base color, duplicate that. All right, we will take and change. Let's see, let's do 100 this time. We're gonna have two different mappings for two different textures. So we're gonna do a mix. I know, I, I know I saw you. Where is the mix RGB? I always forget where it's at. There it is. All right, we're gonna do a mix RGB of the colors. And we'll do this one as the bottom. All right, let's see. Multiply, if I multiply or add them together. Let's say this one is 800. All right, so. There we go. So what this is doing. Let's see what. Uh, Where was multiply? There we go. Multiply, and that doesn't uh, work well. So now, with this mixed RGB at one, we're doing the larger texture. At zero, we're doing the smaller texture. But I kind of want to blend those together. And I think if you do add and you do 100%, it is taking 100% of each one and merging them together. You can kind of see the little grid pattern of the um, the first size just a little bit we could if we wanted to do another one so let's take this one whoopsie daisy let's take this this and I know we're kind of getting off the beaten path here. Let's say this one is 400. Okay. We're going to duplicate another one of these. Oop, I did it in the wrong one. Let's go to color. All right, so zero. It's showing just the mapping of the 400 by 400. 100% means it is taking 400 
by 400 plus 100 by 100 plus 800 by 800. So it is now taking that uh, color here and merging it all together. Of course, this is pretty crazy and I didn't do the same thing with normal. We're just doing this because as you, as you zoom out, this is a, if you want to know this technique, uh, I think World of Tanks did this. So zoomed out, we get sort of that overall texture, but zoomed in, we get a mix of all the textures kind of blurred together. So it's sort of like an LOD for, for the textures. Snow is probably a bad example. We'll do that um, next week with um, the grass. We'll do the, we'll do the rest of this terrain uh, next week. But you get the idea that, see, we just created this snow texture as one graph. And it's just this little tiny node connected to all these other shaders. So we can go through and change the shader of each one of these textures just like we did with snow. We can do whatever we want, make the snow glow for all we care. I mean, we could have a miss emissive color. Let's say it's white. We can have the snow print. Oh, wow. We really, uh, we really did did some damage there. How about we say it's 10? So the snow is pretty bright. <laughs> or the snow is not bright. But um, yeah, and last but not least, this group input is really cool. If I want to say change, let's say these factors right here. So say I want a little bit less of the far texture and a little bit more of the closer texture. Let's take this group, group input here and connect it to one of our factors. So now we've created an adjustable uh, parameter here within our main sort of master material. So we could, if we press in, we can call this, let's see, this first label. I think that's where this is at, actually. Now I can't remember where. <laughs> I think we can actually, let's see, test. Nope. We'll just keep that blank. And I was pretty sure that we could name each one of these labels, but now I don't think you can. I'll investigate that. I'm pretty sure you can name what each one of these is. But you see, like in here, we can we could change this value to whatever we want. And it's sort of a global parameter. Say we want none of this. We want that. No, I don't want that. I want this one, or I want all of them to mix together. So it's just one of those global parameter uh, doohickeys, or even the normal map strength. Say I want the normal map to have a factor that's controlled. So the strength of the normal map, let's change it to five. You see how, see how much that kind of boosted up change it back to one, it's now lower. So there's probably a better way that I can merge these things or basically how to take away that tiling effect. And we're going to go through next week on having fun with more nodes. We may add some actual Megascans assets in here to kind of dive into creating a landscape. I may polish this up a little bit, but I just wanted to run through those things on how to use the splat maps again uh, put every single one of our textures with their own shader graphs within a group to kind of clean up this graph a little bit. Think of just like an Unreal Engine 4 or 5. This right here is our, this right here could be sort of our master 
material for a surface. And this could be the material, um, the landscape material. So you have different um, or different material instances here based on this master material that are all feeding into this landscape material. Same sort of jargon, but it's all, in this case, one specific material. So we have run over a little of our time. Well, we're actually kind of on time with an hour and 15 minutes. Do you guys have any questions before we end it today and move on to um, next week's stream where we take this a little bit further? And hopefully the idea is to render something out within Blender to have it sort of polished up. And while I give you guys a minute, I'm going to save this so I do not forget. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. And again, I will be on next Monday, 830 at the same time, same channel. If you'd like to catch um, this stream early, the 4K variant, it will be available, I believe, this upcoming weekend. I'm, I'm hoping to have the 4K version of this available for Patreon supporters by Friday. If not, it'll be available for YouTube in two weeks from today. So thank you guys again so much for watching and I will see you next time.